From Egyptian pharaohs to clergy and nobility in the Middle Ages, garnets have held a special place in the annals of history. Sporting a wide range of colors, this semi-precious gem is found all over the world. But what makes garnet different from any other gemstone? How does it form? Where does it come from? What are the beliefs surrounding it and where did they originate? We'll be answering some of those questions today and more. This is the second part in a 13 episode series on birthstones, covering the classic chart popularized at the turn of the last century. Please be sure to check out the first episode which covered the general history of the birthstone concept. Let's begin, but beforehand, let me know in the comments, what's your birthstone? And do you like it? As we begin, it's important to identify what a garnet is. Garnets are a type of silicate, with a rather variable and complex crystalline structure. For clarity and sake of time, we will discuss specifically the garnet group and not the garnet supergroup, which is a much broader classification that includes garnet-like vanadates and more. Here is the basic chemical formula, X3Z2SiO4-3, whereas X and Z are variable elements. They could be aluminum, iron, manganese, etc. For instance, pyrope garnets are magnesium and aluminum for the X and Z, respectively, and grosular garnets are calcium and aluminum for the X and Z, respectively. For your future consideration, here is a list of some garnet varieties that you may enjoy. They are well worth checking out. As stated earlier, garnets come in a wide range of colors, not just red, and the various X plus Z elements in these chemical formulas are what cause this color variance. For instance, uvavirite is a gorgeous green, and that green is caused by the presence of chromium in its chemical formula. Garnets are also generally consistent in their growth habits, with the rhombic dodecahedral shape being the trademark for this gem. Rhombic meaning that the faces are diamond shaped, and dodecahedral meaning the crystals are 12 sided. Garnets are common in highly metamorphosed rock, and more rarely in igneous stones. They form under very high temperatures, and as such, geologists will often use garnets as an indicator stone for the temperatures that their host rocks, or matrix, formed in. Garnets have been called by many different names in history, but the most common ancient name for garnet was carbuncle, which is just fun to say. But this generally referred to red gems in general. Standardization in crystallography and mineralogy had yet to come into practice. Similarly, in the Middle Ages, ruby also referred to any red gemstone, a common example of this being the Black Prince's ruby in the English crown jewels. A vibrant red gem that is actually a spinel, and not what we consider a ruby today. The word garnet, however, is derived from the medieval Latin granatus, itself derived from the word granatum, which is the genus for the pomegranate, a many-seeded fruit that the Greco-Roman world associated with the gemstone due to the jewel-like appearance of said seeds. However, even in ancient Rome, it held several names. The earliest recorded name for the garnet was... Ha! <sighs> That's not the word. The words on the screen, I refuse to attempt to pronounce that. It was called that by Tertamus, commonly referred to as Theophrastus. And Theophrastus called it this somewhere between 325 and 300 BCE. Between 77 and 79 CE, Pliny the Elder called it Garamantic Carbuncle. That was a mouthful. Though the significance, name, and perceived meaning has changed, garnet is one of the oldest gemstones known to man, and the superstitions surrounding it are deeply tied to that history. Garnet is attributed as a stone of love, of fertility, of protection, and reputed to offer safety on one's travels. Garnets were reportedly mined in ancient Egypt as far back as 3800 BCE, and as such, many of their beliefs have made their way through history. Garnets were commonly found adorning the bodies of dead ancient pharaohs, worn as prized possessions and believed to offer the pharaoh protection on the journey to the afterlife. Safe travels, so to speak. Similarly, a rabbinic tradition states that Noah navigated the flooded world in the ark safely via garnets that had a self-contained light. And in Jewish tradition, they are also associated with safe travels. If you watched the first video in this series, you'll likely remember that I posited the overall birthstone tradition originating with ancient Babylonian astrological worship, 
During the Diaspora, the dispersion of Jews from their homeland, they found themselves in many places, Egypt being one of them. Just as with the birthstone tradition, it's reasonable to guess that ancient Egypt's belief about garnets, offering safety on a journey, were given new life via the stories of the rabbis. Speaking of new life, that brings us to the next belief, fertility. The ancient Egyptians also venerated garnets as a symbol of power for the fertility goddess Isis, placing them in the eyes of her statues. You can learn a lot about somebody by looking into their eyes, but names also have meaning. As previously mentioned, the modern name garnet is derived from the Latin granatum, and is associated with the pomegranate. The Hellenistic world of the ancient Roman Empire also believed that garnets were a symbol of fertility, amongst other things. The jewel-like seeds of the fruit were likened to deep red garnets, specifically. Those seeds played a key part in the love story of Hades and Persephone. These are the Greek names. They're more recognizable than the Roman ones. The myth has several iterations, but goes something like this. Hades, god of the underworld, steals away Persephone, goddess of sunshine and unbeknownst to her, soon to be queen of the underworld. Her mom, Demeter, is not happy about this. What mother is, really. The seasons go all out of whack until she is allowed to see Persephone again. To guarantee, side note, guarantee, garamantic carbuncle, granatum. I wonder if they share a common etymology there, but I digress. To guarantee her return, Hades feeds her some kind of magical pomegranate seeds. Or he gives them to her again, there are several versions of the story. The magic pomegranate seeds essentially bind her to him, like marriage, and guarantees her return. Some versions of the story depict the seeds turning into garnets upon her return to the underworld. Yet stepping out of the mythology for a moment, the gemstone also had real-world applications in ancient Rome. Garnets were highly prized in the Hellenistic world. The stunning gem being featured in signet rings worn by nobility and government officials alike to stamp the wax that secured official and significant documents. Garnets were a symbol of power and status. Speaking of power, the ancient Persians believed that garnets would imbue their warriors with intense fighting spirit, stave off disease, and somehow protect them from lightning strikes? And here's another odd interjection. I wonder if that last, oddly specific item had to do with the Greco-Persian Wars. Perhaps the lightning belief became prevalent as a means of bolstering courage among soldiers against the Greek god Zeus and his lightning bolts. I have literally nothing to back that up. I've not researched that at all. But I think it's interesting to think about. <laughs> the Vikings, interestingly, believed that adorning themselves with garnets would also imbue their warriors with fighting spirit. And speaking of disease, in the Middle Ages of Europe, garnets were used to attempt to cure the Black Plague. Again, I wonder if there's a connection. There, there probably is. The ancient Chinese believed that garnets were the souls of tigers that had crystallized after death. Though technically they believed all red gems were, so that would also include rubies and spindle and other things. But if garnets are tiger's blood, then you just need some Madonna's DNA to become Charlie Sheen. I really wish my brain would be put to good use instead of soaking up obscure references like that. Today, the modern metaphysical community associates garnets with safe travels for loved ones, and love in general, the origins of which are quite obvious. Beliefs tend to migrate far more than people realize, and just like an army, they don't form overnight. And I find that those origins are often just as interesting as the gemstones tied to them. The origins of many of these beliefs are one thing, but where are garnets found today? Literally all over the world. South Africa, Sri Lanka, China, Madagascar, India, Brazil, the United States, Kenya, Poland, Russia, Finland, Myanmar, and more. But since I am and many of my subscribers are in the United States, I'll give a brief overview of a few collecting localities that you can go to yourself. 
As always, be safe, be legal, and be prepared. Let people know where you are going, take precautions, take lots of snacks, don't trespass, and if you can, find a gem and mineral club in your area. Or at least one that you plan to hunt in. They are a wealth of information and knowledge, and may get you into places you otherwise won't be able to go. Number 1. Garnet Hill Recreation Area off of US-50 outside of Eli, Nevada. Number 2. Garnet Ridge, or Hill, in Paulding County, Georgia. Number 3. Emerald Creek Garnet Area near Clarkia, Idaho, and you can find star garnets here apparently. It's one of two places in the world other than India. Number 4. Several privately operated mines in the Gore Mountain area of upstate New York. Number five, and, and more. There are garnet localities in several other states in the United States, including North Carolina, South Carolina, Alaska, and more. If there are metamorphic rocks, there may well be garnets. And since garnets are actively mined, they must have a use, right? Today, aside from the stunning jewelry that you will see all over the place, garnets have some surprising industrial applications, the most interesting being as a media for water jet cutting and water filtration. A water jet cutter produces high pressure water jets and garnet abrasives are added to that water to aid in the cutting. Garnets have been used as an abrasive in a variety of applications for actually quite a while. Garnet is also used as a filtration media, and it's perfect for it, as garnets are both chemically inert and non-metallic. So what do you think about this deep dive into garnets? And what interested you the most? Let me know in the comments, and if you haven't yet, please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing. It greatly helps the channel. Check the description and pinned comment to find links to my Discord and Patreon as well. Thanks for watching though, and I'll see you in the next one.